Hey, my little genie in a bottles. So I am going with this genie look today. If you want to see how I got it, keep on watching and check out my social media platforms at Claudine and official and aesthetic 15 is my Snapchat because I'm most active on those two platforms and I'll have new videos out every Wednesday and Saturday. Comment on some genie emojis if you have them. If you don't have the genie emojis yet, comment down anything yellow and gold. You know, people were clocking me in the last video, calling me ratchet and stuff. Just, you know, being rude. No need for the unnecessary rude comments. So I'm gonna start off with the Benefit Foolproof Brow and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in Chocolate. So as I've said in my previous videos, I'm gonna take the brow brush and pinch it as tight as it can be, get some product on it, and then pinch it again to be even tighter. So I'm going to place my eyebrows higher than my natural brow. Tell me, are they both even? Comment down below, are they even? Are they sisters? Are they James Charles sisters? Or are they twins? Because we obviously prefer twins. No shade, just true. Oh, I look like a woman. I posted a video on my Instagram of my mom and I, and so many people were commenting about my boy brows. Cause when I do videos with my mom, I'm not really worried about what I look like. I'm most worried about how I'm doing my mom's makeup, obviously, cause I'm doing her makeup. And so many people were like, oh my God, look at his eyebrows, they're horrible. Girl, I threw them on. Like I literally am just throwing on my eyebrows when I do my mom's makeup. Listen, I'm hoping my brows look good. They don't look good, that's not on me. But I mean, I don't know why. I just hope I never feel this way again. I hope I never look this way again. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'll feel better by the end of the video. In with the Tarte Shape Tape. This is the Fair Tarte Shape Tape. And I am using the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush in 15 as my concealer brush. It's a flat angular brush. Use it to conceal around my brows. Now I feel like concealing your brows is so important because it does bring everything together. The brush I'm using to blend out my concealer today is this Morphe M520 brush. I generally use this to pack on shadows, which I know is, it's not really necessarily what it's meant for, but this is what I'm using today because it'll make the process faster. If you have somewhere to go like I do, it will like speed up the process. Feel that because it's bugging me that huge pimple. For those of y'all who might have clocked me on last video, it was a Kylie Jenner makeup transformation. Uh, I will have no concealer lines this time over my lip. It was that area specifically that there was like a concealer line or whatever that was bugging people. I will not have that this time. Don't worry, I don't normally put concealer on my lips like that. It was just because that's what was in the Kylie photo. So I'm gonna take the Sam Marcel Luxurious uh, Highlight Palette. I'm gonna use this shade Soleil. It's a golden shade. Now I'm gonna be doing kind of a golden look. I've done looks like this so many times in the past. It's definitely nothing new under the sun for my Instagram, but for YouTube, you know, I haven't done videos in months. So this is definitely something new. What's been stuck in my mind all day is, it's been a lot of fun, let's get started. Our first caress. Let's do this Morphe palette. This is the Morphe 15D palette. This does have some really bright oranges. I try not to promote Morphe too much because uh, they don't be answering my emails and stuff. I'm gonna go with the Upbeat shade and I'm using that as my transition for today. So this is a really, really uh, dark transition. I might even need a lighter one in a second. Lots of really bright colors or bright oranges on my eyes and hopefully this palette will be able to fulfill that. I haven't actually used this palette that much, but it does have some seemingly really bright oranges. Comment down below, what is some of your favorite bright orange palettes that work really well in terms of pigmentation, that are gonna get some good payoff in terms of color? You know, I'm not gonna be getting no stale oranges. Now I'm using the shade In The Crease. I wonder if that means like it's supposed to be In The Crease. I don't know, but let's apply it there. Oh, wow. Now that's a bright shade. In the crease, you got me shook because I was not expecting that. Yeah, so this shade is really bright in terms of its pigmentation. This orange is, ooh, yes. Now I'm going in with my Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. As you can see, I've used this palette a lot. The writing is actually off of it. This palette definitely has some really good pigmentation for people who need information on some color payoff palettes. This palette is the one. Now I'm gonna take this burnt orange shade in the crease. I'm using the Sigma pencil brush in E30 and I'm using this to create my new crease. I'm just gonna try to pull everything together with a blending brush. This is the Morphe M505 brush and this is gonna try to just help me blend all those harsh lines or edges. And again, I'm not too worried about 
that lid area because I do cover it up with concealer. So we're gonna try to ignore that for right now and focus strictly from here to the crease. Now, if you do have Asian hooded eyes like mine, you're gonna wanna raise them, kind of look down when you do your makeup and look directly into whatever you're looking into and see where your eyes are gonna place. And then you can, if you feel really ugly, then just go ahead and raise your eyebrows and see how it's gonna look. And you could just walk around with your eyebrows half raised all day. <laughs> Just so that way I know what I'm working with when I do the crease, how high it's going to be. Because when you look and you're doing this, you know, the crease might look really high. You're like, oh my God, this is going to look so high. But since your eyes are already naturally, you know, you have that smaller lid, you want to be able to look and see, okay, so I'm going to work with this much space. Even though when I do this, it looks like I have a lot of space. You still want to even maybe raise it a little bit higher to give yourself that crease. Now we're going to go back in with that Tarte Shape Tape. And I'm going to use that concealer brush to create my new crease. You want to keep looking that way so you know where you're you're placing your lid. I'm going to take this yellow shade as a transition shade from the Jaclyn Hill palette and pack that on. And I'm just going to work in those darker shadows and see how it kind of fuses with the crease. That's what it's it's basically a half cut crease. It's not like a full on drag eye, but it is still a cut crease creating your eyelid larger. Oh my God, where is that brush? What is going on? Where did that brush go? This is so like me to lose my stuff in the middle of a video. So I'm gonna use that shade from the Sam Marcel highlight palette and pack that into my white area of the new lid I've created. And now I'm just going to repeat this on this side. When I do my makeup, I always have baby wipes handy. This is just the pure and gentle wipes, but I go ahead and I clean up any fallout. And that's another reason as to why I do my eyeshadow first, because I know the way I practice makeup, there's gonna be fallout. Take the concealer, this part again is not necessary, but it does make everything look different. Um, so you take that concealer and the concealer brush, it's almost like you're creating eyeliner. Create a line there and then drag it out to uh, get rid of all of that fallout and pigment that you didn't necessarily want. And just blend away. So this is like what it would look like without it, and then this is what it looks like with it. It just looks so much more clean and neat. But if you're going for that smudgy rock star look, or like that's just the look you're going for, you don't necessarily have to do this. So now I'm gonna pop into this Real Technique sponge kit. This is actually four of the same sponge. It's the complexion sponge. Honestly, this over Beauty Blender every time, only because a set of two is $10. You get this four pack, it's $17. The four pack is equivalent to less than one Beauty Blender. So you might as well get these. And they work exactly the same, at least for me personally. But I do recommend you always dampen your sponges. And I don't think people really take that seriously. So yeah, this is a damp sponge. This is a dry sponge. Even when working with powders, you want to use a damp sponge. And then you're just gonna get a completely different application. And I'm telling you guys, I cannot stress it enough that you guys use a damp sponge over a dry sponge. I just don't think people realize the big difference. Once you really start noticing the difference, you'll be like, oh my God, why haven't I been doing this the whole time? So I'm going in with the Derma Blend Camo Mousse. This is my favorite foundation ever, honestly. Derma Blend has always been my favorite brand. My mom's used it growing up. So it's, it's really something I'm very familiar with. But also the Derma Blend does cover so well. So like it just, airbrushes everything with the camo mousse. Now with their other things, you know, the color, the color coverage, you know, your, if you have birthmarks, if you have acne, this is gonna, this is gonna disguise that. I'm just letting you guys know right now, Derma Blend is the main product I use. I do sometimes use the It Cosmetics when I'm feeling like, you know, I don't need full coverage. But a night, any day I go out, any day I go out, because of the humidity of where I live, uh, because of, you know, my skin conditions where I get oily, or maybe I start sweating, I use Derma Blend. I'm 100%. Now there are some Derma Blend products that I don't necessarily recommend for everybody, like the leg and body cover, okay? So if you have vitiligo on your body or you have a birthmark that you wanna cover on your leg, yeah, you're gonna wanna use the leg and body cover. But my mom actually uses the leg and body on her face and lately she's been switching to some other products that they offer because you know the way they, they rebranded their leg and body cover, it's just not, and they did recreate the formula and things are a bit different. Is this pimple? 
Oh no. Now, do I know my hand is not gonna match my face? Of course I do. That's, that's my own mistake, but I'm gonna keep living like that. I'm gonna keep living my life recklessly and uh, using my darker foundation and getting it on my shirt. So once I've highlight, I go in with my airspun powder and I just put my setting powder in those areas that I've highlighted. I don't use powder where I've contoured or where I plan on contouring since obviously I do my contouring after afterwards. Um, and I just do that because I use a contour powder, so I guess like I don't really need it. Now, I use a lot of setting powder, and I know that. Uh, a lot of people don't like that because it does make you feel thick, it makes you feel cakey, but it is gonna make your makeup last. It is going to make your makeup uh, stay on your face. So if you have the issue of your foundation, when you touch, when you touch things, your foundation's everywhere, you need to start using setting powder because the foundation is not just gonna stop doing that on its own. Most foundations require a setting powder. Now the problem with setting powder is that it may cause your foundation to oxidize. It is what it is, find a lighter foundation in that case. That's the only time I'm gonna say get a lighter foundation in your normal shape. So I'm gonna blend everything up. Going in with my Hula Bronzer. Um, who saw that little like scandal of them inviting all those like big name makeup artists, although they didn't include me, I'm just kidding. So all the like, uh, makeup artists to the retreats, which is like basically a vacation just to reveal that mascara. What is everybody's thoughts on that? Because personally, I mean, I get it. You know, they want to promote their product. Benefit is very extra. They're a, they're a very different brand. They're very social. They're very um, big on their PR. But mascara girl, really, like, I don't know. Personally, I think there's much more innovative products to be revealed mascara though i don't i don't know how to feel now i'm going in with the anastasia beverly hills blush kit and this is the gradient blush kit so the gradient blush kit i'm going in with these two shades these are their more terracotta shades um and i use that kind of below where i contour now i'm going in with the radiant blush kit in these three shades right here and i just do that and I put it right here. What I like about the Anastasia blush is it's easily blended. You know, it's very layerable. And then when you have, say you put too much on, you can blend it out. Like it's not gonna stay there. This is my favorite, favorite nose contouring brush. It's the Luxie brush and it's like this pink brush and I use it for nose contouring because it's perfect for that. So we're gonna spray it on the brush too. Sam Marcel palette to highlight today just because that's what's on hand and then really wet those areas that you're gonna highlight because it's going to make the difference. So now I'm going to go in with this shade. This is the center shade and this one is Creme. Blinding! So that's how you highlight girlies. That's how you're gonna get that bright highlight. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, well I don't wear highlight cause it never shows up. I'm telling you, you have to, it's not your highlighter either. Cause the, the odds are that if the pigment is wet, it's going to be bright. So you just wanna get that pigment wet somehow with setting spray, obviously not like oil or water or anything, but. I never highlight without using a highlight pigment and the only highlight pigment I use is Artist Couture. This is the shade Illuminati. So I'm gonna use that one today mixed with Conceited. Conceited is my favorite, <laughs> Conceited is my favorite Artist Couture highlight. It's a, again, it's a highlight pigment. So when you open it, you have loose pigments and that, is completely different than using a highlight palette. And this is conceited, so tap off a little bit of the excess because it is really powerful. And woo! Com it's just, it's uncomparable. It's really different. But that's why I use the Artist Couture one over any of my highlight. Um, just because it just does make everything brighter because it is a loose pigment. I'm using the NYX Matte Liquid Liner. I don't use the vinyl because the vinyl does look it looks textured when I use it on my eyes, so I always use the matte liner. And the re liquid liner takes a long time to practice. If you guys think I should do an eyeliner tutorial, let me know, because um, I've come a long way with my eyeliner. Now I'm going in with the Shake It Fresh Mascara by Rimmel London. This is actually one of my favorite um, mascaras. It is really clumpy, and it makes things really thick looking, but... So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Comment down below your thoughts. Thanks for watching. See ya.